Hello, and welcome to Oberlin Stage Left. My name is Rebecca Landau Reed, and I'm professor of Baroque cello and viola da gamba at Oberlin Conservatory. I'm joined by Professor Mark Edwards and two Oberlin Conservatory students, Joshua Rhodes and Maya Ridenauer. And my name is Mark Edwards. I'm a harpsichord professor here at Oberlin. And this semester, it was uh, a privilege to lead and co-direct the Baroque Orchestra with Rebecca. So today is uh, March 21st, which um, to me means the beginning of spring, but in the early music world, it is the um, international celebration of early music. Um, yeah, I actually didn't know that there was an early music day until this year, and I was wondering, Mark, if you could tell us a little about what early music day is. Um, early Music Day, I think, was something that, that started, especially in Europe, um, meant to be a celebration of all of the fantastic things that happen in, uh, in early music. And uh, since it started, it's really spread worldwide. And so there are various celebrations of Early Music Day all across the globe. And so we're really pleased to, um, to be part of that excitement. So for those of you who are maybe unfamiliar with historical performance or this idea of early music, um, what that means is that um, both Mark and I uh, study the instruments and sources and manuscripts that were present at the time that ancient music was written. And we like to engage students in this sort of historical exploration by directing this Baroque orchestra. And um, this semester, Maya and Joshua were joining us at the Baroque Orchestra for the very first time and got to have a firsthand experience of what it felt like to play on some Baroque instruments um, in, a, in a larger ensemble. So I would love to hear from, from both of you about your experience with these instruments for the first time. Um, maybe Maya, I'll start with you. Um, so before you came to Oberlin, had you ever, like you're, you're a modern cellist, but had yes. you ever heard of a, a Baroque cello before? Um, I've seen seen them, interacted with them, heard them, but never really played for a long period of time. This semester was definitely my first. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So when you kind of had your hands on it for the first time, what were some things that were markedly different between your modern cello and the early cello? Yeah. So the most obvious thing is that the Baroque cello lacks an end pin, which is what in a modern cello drives into the ground and holds the cello in place. So uh, Baroque cellists, we uh, hold the cello with our with our legs. Um, also, the bow hold is a bit different, and we play on gut strings. Uh, those are those are the the main differences. Yeah, and the 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 bow, like you're talking about, the bow hold is quite different, and the shape of the bow even is different. Like like a modern bow is con was it convex? No, convex concave. Excuse me, and a baroque bow is convex. That sounds right. So it like it's, it's a totally different tool. Um, in your hand that's yeah totally different experience um and when i had asked you to play with us in baroque orchestra you had only been taking lessons for one week um and you just like jumped into the challenge it was really cool um were there any things about playing baroque cello in an ensemble or you know challenges about playing the instrument that sort of surprised you yeah i remember going into the the first rehearsal um thinking, okay, I, I, I'm prepared, you know, I, I can at least um, improvise, um, it'll be fine. Um, but what I didn't know is that gut strings actually, they, they're they very sensitive to temperature changes. And so they go out of tune very quickly. Um, you can imagine from walking outside in like freezing weather into Stoll uh, Sol, um, Hall and it's just, um, it kept going out of tune. So eventually I was like, Rebecca, I can't do this. You know, we had to stop rehearsal. It was this embarrassing thing, but it's it's inevitable for for new baroque instrumentalists um but when you're not trying to frantically uh tune your instrument um playing in baroque orchestra was very a very nice experience um i love um kind of the small setting the intimacy um having your own part and being one of the only people playing that part um especially in the second movement of the vivaldi you know um i kind of played the role of the uh the uh, beat giver, what the soloists, the two cellists uh, bounce off of. And this was kind of, I mean, it, it was it was very, it was a very nice experience that we don't always get in a modern symphony orchestra. That's wonderful. Yeah, and Joshua, you're a, a fifth year double bass major, um, but you played 
two instruments um, in this program. You play the Baroque bass and uh, a violone, which is like an even older predecessor of the bass. Um, what, what are the differences between those two instruments? Yeah, um, well, I, I had my list originally, and then I heard Maya uh, talking about the difference in the cello, and uh, it, it certainly mimics some of those things. So I think one of the, the biggest um, differences is, is the strings, right? So on the, the violone, there were there are six strings in all, which is different than a bass alone. There are four strings on a, on a modern bass. On the violone, there were six strings, and the top four strings were gut strings. And then the bottom two were steel strings, which um, steel being what we normally play on in modern bass. So that was quite different. Um, and then with the Baroque bass, that was something that I was a little bit more used to. So it had four strings, but they were all gut strings as well. So that was that was different. And then the both of the instruments had frets, which again, that's not something that we use on modern bass. Um, so that took getting used to. Um, and I would also say that we did have an end pin, thankfully, um, which is different than the cellist. But I just, I had to, I would play the violone sitting down, um, trying to leverage the, the six strings. It was quite different than the four strings that I'm used to managing. Um, so that was, that was one of those other things. And the bow hold, like Maya was, was talking about, for bassists, it was also different because in modern playing, we either have the, the German bow or the French bow. Um, overhand or underhand. However, and I'm used to playing overhand, but when it came to early music playing or uh, violone or Baroque bass playing with the um, Baroque bow, I would actually, the hold was just a bit different and a little bit um, further away from the frog. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a huge difference in getting used to how do I use the bow and trying to figure out how do I get these strings to move. Um, the Corelli kind of offered up a lot of challenges in like jumping from one octave to the complete opposite octave at the lower end but that was jumping from gut strings to steel strings. And so if you're rosin or however sticky your bow was, you know, it had to be able to work both of the strings. So those were some of the, the main differences and challenges that I got to experience um, in, the, in playing in the bro ensemble. So I, I'm curious, Joshua, um, you, probably when, when you play in a modern orchestra, you're used to being part of a larger bass section. And so you, you, it was just you in this concert playing violone and bass. So how was the experience of, of playing in the orchestra different um, in, in a Baroque orchestra versus a modern orchestra? And did you have any sort of favorite parts of the program? Right, um, oh, that was such a sensation. I, and I was thinking like, I played in operas, right? Where there's only one or two basses. I've played, you know, in, in consort with Rebecca and stuff where there's, you know, everyone has a different part. So I'm familiar with the idea of, of being alone. However, in an ensemble or in an orchestra, that, that was, I think the main difference was, you know, there would be two first violins, two second violins, two violas. And so that was, that was the big deal, you know, was making those decisions and deciding, you know, what are we gonna do or having the idea of what sounds best for the ensemble um, in terms of, you know, which bow to you or uh, up, down, up bow, down bow. Um, that, those were really, that was different than I, than I had expected, how I wanted my sound to come out or sound um, was very, again, different than what I'm used to. I'll say the, the main thing or my, my favorite part is was switching instruments. So being able to jump from Baroque bass to violone. And again, they were just very, very different instruments. And so in the Corelli, I enjoyed the kind of the line and and where it was going. And then again, there were many octave displacements that I found. And so having to kind of maneuver my body to, to get a string to speak on one other end, like I mentioned before, that was kind of, I, I enjoyed that. I, I enjoy like the challenges that come with playing. And so this was actually perfect for me to see something different. Um, and I think that the, the big thing with being in the orchestra too, I think Maya was kind of speaking about it earlier, I thought that I had known everything that was going to present itself to me. So I was sure I had tuned before I had, I was, you know, like I was um, really solid in my tuning. I had made sure that it was just perfect and no room for error. And then, you know, you get in the ensemble and your gut strings just don't seem to hold like the steel strings. And so plenty of times in rehearsal, a peg would slip 
and with bass players we also we our pegs are they're um, metal and so they they stick there and we don't have to do too much but with the earlier instruments than the violone especially there's pushing and there's turning and pushing and turning and yeah that got kind of complicated but i would say i i enjoyed the both pieces that I played, so the Corelli and the Vivaldi were fabulous pieces, um, and they offered, I think, different types of playing. Maya had also talked about in the second movement of the Vivaldi, um, you know, being being in that position of supporting the the two cellists. It was very interesting, and it was new for me too, because it's you don't get bass solely a lot, even in an opera. And so, um, yeah, the different ways that we had rehearsed it were just very fascinating and and an enjoyable experience, and I learn so much too about how to support. So it was 10 out of 10 experience all the way. So we should definitely definitely check that out in, in the audience, listen for those two two instruments and uh, second right. movement of Vivaldi seems like a big hit. It's actually my favorite movement as well. So. <laughs> um, so there's one piece that neither of you got to play which is the anonymous French piece on the program. Um, and Mark, uh, you brought this piece to my attention for the first time um, and I'm curious how you discovered it and what you can tell us about the piece. Sure, um, so I think so much of um, early music, the early music movement has been involved in um, discovering unfamiliar repertories. Um, and so this is not by any means a, a newly discovered piece. It's been recorded, uh, but not very frequently. And in my own case, I stumbled on it while also doing research um, related to 17th century French harpsichordists. And I looked at the manuscript and then discovered there was a modern edition. And I thought, oh boy, we have to play this. This is really good music. Um, it's, it's fascinating though, because it's a style of music that actually we're not very familiar with. This is early 17th century French music. We're mostly familiar with the music of Lully, which is later 17th century. Um, and it's lucky that it's preserved in a manuscript compiled near the end of the 17th century by this man named Philidor, who was uh, essentially the librarian uh, at court, responsible for assembling records of the various kinds of music that had been performed at court. Um, so it's a, really, uh, it's a really sort of exciting window into that particular time. Um, well, uh, thank you, and thank you all for taking time today to share and share your experiences with us. And um, now, please enjoy the Oberlin Baroque Orchestra.
Thank you.